Hello and thank you again for joining us in the second day of Cointelegraph sponsored Block Show Asia Conference right here in Singapore. If you have a moment, we have a fantastic guest with us. Can you please just introduce yourself and sure. tell us what you do? Yeah, so my name is John Patrick Mullen. I'm currently an investment banker at Guotai Junan Securities, which is a large Chinese investment firm. Um, and I'm running fintech research for them uh, on the buy side. So basically, we're looking at different fintech uh, verticals for investment opportunities. Um, I also run a fintech community in Shanghai, which is part of a larger global network called the Fintech Connector. And I'm currently an advisor for several different ICO projects, uh, Trade.io and another one called Lucid Exchange. So it sounds like you're deeply, deeply rooted into the blockchain community. Quite, say quite, the least. quite, quite busy, quite, quite deeply rooted, I would say, yeah. What is the most exciting sector that you find blockchain will have an impact on? Mm. So, I mean, coming from the investment space, I think that a lot of the, uh, you know, blockchain impl implementation has been on post-trade, mm. so settlements, post-trade, and keeping track of, 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 of actually the transactions and client information. But I think for, for us and for me particularly, I think it's actually going to be a lot more interesting when we do more on the pre-trade um, and actually the settlement and the, uh, the whole process of, of, a, of, a, of a trade. Right. So once you can actually get the transactions up to speed, mm -hmm. I think we're, we're working towards that, you know, we're, we're, making, we're making progress. Let me ask you, what do you think about um, Bitfury's new, uh, new project, their new blockchain technology to create faster transactions? I mean, I'm down for anything that can create faster transactions, to be completely honest. I, at, this, at this point in time, I think we all are, especially what's happening today with uh, a few of the exchanges going down. Exactly. I mean, you know, you recently just saw Bitfinex banned Americans. Yes. We're both Americans, so, you know, yes, yes. Um, I think the, the, more, the faster the transactions, the better. I mean, one of the things that we're doing at the Trade.io projects, we're, we're a blockchain exchange, a multi-asset blockchain exchange. Uh, we're actually on Ethereum mainnet with a rate and off-chain. So, you know, that way we can continually have the transactions that we need. Okay. So I think you'll start seeing the, the integration of on and off-chain to make the transactions fast enough. And then right. that, that's where security really comes into play. Okay. Do you guys have any plans of incorporating Exonum into your, uh, into your pipeline? So we're blockchain agnostic. You know, we'll take the best technology out there that there is. You know, whatever's the fastest, whatever's the most secure, we're, you know, why would we not? You know, we have a duty to our, to our clients and to our customers to be the best exchange possible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we don't necessarily have any loyalty to, to any specific program. Okay. Of course, we have people that we're talking to and that we like and, and different projects. Well, I'm not going to mention those too much yet because that's still, <laughs> fair, still, fair. still in the pipeline. Absolutely fair. Uh, we saw that you were on the panel for AI yes. and blockchain. That's right. Can you talk to me a little bit more about how blockchain and AI will affect the everyday person and the okay. everyday consumer in that respect? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think one of the most simple ways that this could happen is, is really if you look at no cars, actually. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you drive an uh, autonomous vehicle, uh, there's an AI in that. Right. You know, there's there's algorithms that are uh, that are that are taking place that are, are you know basically allowing you to drive without having to man manually mm -hmm. steer the car. Um, if you start implementing this into kind of more of the blockchain space, you have autonomous vehicles which have telematic sensors, um, which are putting out tons and tons and tons of data. If you can then decentralize this and distribute it across networks, um, there's a lot of implications for, for insurers, for example. So then uh, that's really where insurance people are looking at. So like last week I was at AIG giving a presentation about blockchain and insurance and insure tech. And I think that's something where you'll, you'll get better um, premiums, mm -hmm. quicker claims. I mean, that's something that can happen much right. quicker. I mean, I'll, to be honest, a lot of the space is still developing. There's a lot of a lot of things to come so you know we're, we're still a little bit far away away from from total implementation of you know artificial intelligence people have a misnomer of what is artificial intelligence it can be very very simple it's not always robots that are you know walking everywhere so it's not all Terminator using blockchain to infiltrate our lives very very far from it it's a lot more simple than that it's really just taking taking data sets and, 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 and then kind of figuring out what's the signals and what's the noise so do you think in, in, in your sector, mm. um, blockchain will be a more passive uh, tool, a technology, and implementation into everyday process? Or do you see you still actively working to look for companies that are blockchain based? Or will the world transform and that will be the standard? It's just truth and transparency, blockchain will deal with you. How do you view that? I mean, I think, you know, from traditional financial institutions, you know, they're going to start with the, with the private blockchain blockchain networks, of course, you know. Um, why would uh, a JP Morgan use a public blockchain, you know? Um, so I think blockchain is, is definitely the future. I'm a very, very firm believer in this. Um, 
but at the same time, you know, you're definitely going to have a separation between you know public and private blockchains, and 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 for and, and for traditional finance institutions, that's going to be very very clear. I mean, you're already seeing that, you know, with with the different consortiums and whatnot out there. Um, you'll see more companies that are starting to adopt this internally, um, but it takes time. You know, we're still in the early stages of, of the of the you know technology uh, maturation cycle. So uh, you know, there's still lots of lots of room to grow, and uh, I think. In the future, it's going to be it's going to be much more widespread. You know, you'll see you'll see the JP Morgans of the world that are going to be having their own blockchain. Let me ask you, what personally have you found exciting at the show, whether it's a technology or an actual company? Oh, good question. Um, actually, I've been pretty interested about your company, to be honest, oh, about Moeco. So <laughs> okay. I've been talking to Stephen about about your about what you guys are looking at, and, and uh, you know, actually just been hanging out with you, uh, which has been really fun. Um, and you know, Same seeing who, seeing uh, seeing some of the people you guys are talking to, it's it's an exciting project. So I, I like you. that. You know, IoT the IoT sector is quite interesting for me. So. Thank you. If you had any advice to give to entrepreneurs, engineers, companies as a whole, as they start to dive down uh, the path of blockchain in the world of ICOs and cryptocurrency, yeah. what two pieces of advice do you have for them? Okay, two. Oh, first one, um, you know, don't just put something on blockchain to put it on blockchain. <laughs> Right. To be completely honest, you know, make sure that you can that it actually solves a problem or, or or creates better efficiencies or more you know efficient processes, creates more transparency, etc. You know, don't just do it to ride the wave. Do it because it actually means something right. for your business. And then number two, I would say. Um, you know, hire the right people, hire the right talent, and, and make sure you have you know the, a strong core team mm -hmm. that believes in the project, um, that knows what they're talking about with the technology, um, and and uh, you know I think it's easier to teach the technology than it is to teach the business side of things. To right. be completely honest, right. So you know, make sure that they have a business sense about it, because there's a lot of technical teams that are going to fail because they don't know how to do the business. Okay. So uh, I think um, you can teach the technical part. You can always get the technical people, mm -hmm. and you and, and hire good technical people. You know, right. you need those. Absolutely. Pay pay top dollar for these guys because you. Need them. You need them. You need them. Absolutely. But you also need the people who can, uh, you know, run the business. Okay. So those are my two things I would All say. All right. Thank you. This is Stephen Chase for Coin Telegraph in the 80% humidity and <laughs> 80 degree weather. Thank you. <laughs>